your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18 this morning. We're going to give the munchkins just a minute here to exhale. Today there's lots to celebrate. There'll be lots of distractions, lots of focus moved around off of Christ. Uh, today's a day of, of fun for the kids and family and church. And, and uh, we're going to go have a wonderful meal after church. But I want us to take uh, this moment, this time, put our focus back where it belongs. I want us to turn our minds and our hearts and our attention to why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. A day that the Almighty Creator made the human flesh, died in our place, and rose again, taking judgment upon Himself. This day in history was a day like no other before, no other since. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for each and every person here, Lord, with us. Thank you for our friends and our family. Lord, thank you most of all for the blood of Jesus. Lord, help me today. Help me to say what you want me to say. Help me to speak in a manner that is easily understood. Help me to say, help me to not say what I should not say. And for you to be lifted up, for Christ to be glorified, for people to see Jesus and not me. Let me get out of your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. What does that mean? If I said that to Brother Ben, I said, oh, come on, let's, let's, let's reason me. Let's talk. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Let's, let's, solve, let's, let's settle this. Let's talk about this for a minute. See, our sin was paid for. <clears throat> Though they were red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This was accomplished not by us, not by our works, not by our, our, our great attitude and our impressive deeds. No. It was accomplished by Jesus. If you were to look in Exodus, and we've read this before, and you can look at the reference. If you were to look at Exodus 12, verses 12 through, I think they're on the board there, verses 12 through 17. God gave the children of Israel the ordinance to keep the, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Last week we studied the events leading up to the crucifixion. We talked about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, how the sacrifice for the people was to be sacrificed on the Passover. The lamb had to be slain on the Passover. All right? Now I want you to turn to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. It's important that you see that God did everything that he said he was going to do. Well, Brother Josh, why is that important? Because he said he took away your sin. Now, if, if uh, say, Noah and I work together. Noah, let's say that you and I, we, we do jobs together all the time. And every time you say you're going to do something, you say, hey, I'm going to do this, and then you do it. Say, hey, I'm going I'm to go dig that hole, you do it. Hey, I'm going to go fill that truck with gas, you do it. Hey, I'm going to do this, you do it. And every time I say I'm going to do something, I say, hey, I'm going to go here and I'm going to fix this problem, and I don't. Hey, I'm gonna go, I'll fill the truck up when I put it back, and I don't. Well, when someone hears you say something, what do they do? I believe Noah. Why? Because he's built trust. I trust that Noah's going to do what he said he was going to do because he always has done it. Well, when Josh goes over here and says, well, I'm going to do this, and nobody believes me, why? Because I'm a liar. So 
So it's important that you see that God did everything he said he was going to do, and he did that so we would learn to trust him. Amen. In John chapter 19, in verse 31, the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain, what was the preparation? It was the preparation day for the Passover. Should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. What does that mean? Well, that was the annual Sabbath, right? It was the Passover Sabbath. It was the holy day of the year. The sought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Jesus was crucified in the morning, and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread started that evening. They wanted him dead and gone before it started. So, they crucified Jesus Christ. He died. And they put him in a borrowed tomb. Sacrifice had to die before the feast. And then, verse 32, Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first, and the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus... And saw that he was dead already. They break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And forthwith came out there, there out blood and water. And he saw. And he that saw it bear record. And his record is true. He knoweth that he saith true. That ye might believe. For these things were done. That the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. If you want a reference. That's Exodus 12, 46. It says don't break any bones of the sacrifice. Verse 37, and again another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. That's Zechariah 12, 10. If you want the reference for that. It says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. Okay? This is, this is all exactly going according to God's plan. Turn to Psalms chapter 22. We'll come back. Come back to John. Turn to Psalms chapter 22 for a second. Leave your finger in John chapter 19 if you haven't already left. Psalms chapter 22. Brother Mike, what's this chapter about in Psalms? <coughs> what's, what's the context? I read it. What's that, sir? I don't know what popped up my head and I don't know yet. Uh, we've talked about this before. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. This is a psalm of David, and it starts in verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Does that sound familiar, folks? Yes, <clears throat> this, this mirrors the crucifixion. This mirrors Jesus. This was written by David 1,500 years beforehand. Mm -hmm. So look at chapter 22, verse 14. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Was King David ever crucified? So this is not about David. Okay. Now I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. All right, turn back to John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, Besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. Now he's dead, right? A lot of people say he wasn't dead when they took him down. A lot of people try. How do we know he was dead? Well, soldiers are stabbing him. Right? He's crucified. He, you know what crucifixion does? It suffocates you to death. Slowly. Because carbon dioxide and stuff builds up in your lungs because you can't expand them. It's a horrible, gruesome, painful, slow death. Okay? Verse 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner 
of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. It was close. That empty tomb is important. That new tomb was carved for someone and their whole family. And they put Jesus in it instead. So this ends the preparation day. It's a crazy day, right? We had a man arrested a couple days ago, put him on trial. He was found innocent and still summarily executed by crucifixion, the worst way. And while all that was going on, there were some earthquakes. The sun winked out for a few hours. This man that was killed like a common criminal, but laid in a rich man's tomb and anointed with spices like a king. But it's all over now. It's quiet. It's time for the feast day. Pharisees go put on their best clothes, and they go worship God. We talked a few weeks ago about what worship is. They go to worship God by celebrating the feast of the Passover, by going and saying how we kept the law, killed the lamb. We killed the lamb, all right. But at least it's all quiet now. Whew, that Jesus character, he's dead now. Now, some people will tell you that he was crucified on Friday and then rose again on Sunday. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. In... in John chapter 2, verse 19, here's your reference. It says, Jesus answered them to destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, it says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Mark chapter 8, verse 31, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. So, the story is, hey, at three days, something's going to happen. What the Pharisees do? Seal the tomb. Set some soldiers. Can't have this guy getting out. Can't have the disciples stealing his body and lying about it. We, we can't have them lying about the death of this, this, this character here. We've got to prove he's dead. Okay, he's dead. All right? So, it's Sunday morning. It's the first day of the week. Passover is over. The year is 33 AD, and it's a very, very quiet Sunday morning. Everybody had a holiday. There's not, going, there's not much going on. It's in the spring. Flowers are getting to bloom. And turn to chapter Matthew chapter 28. Very quiet morning. Nothing going on, nothing to see here. Got rid of that heretic. Pharisees are back in charge. The movement of Jesus Christ and all his disciples have been dealt a fatal blow. We don't have to worry about that religion anymore, right? They're, they're, they're done. We, fi we fixed it. We fixed it, guys. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Hey, y'all are late. He already left. Just like he said he was going to do, he's not here. Amen. The soldiers, what are they doing? They're over there peeing their pants. Angels were sitting here just greeting people. How you doing? Come see Whoa, 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 that doesn't happen. That's a fairy tale. Uh-huh. The skeptic says, yeah, right, this can't happen. Correction, this doesn't happen often. This can't happen because you can't do it. You can't understand. You can't see it. 
See, all historical records agree that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person, was crucified by the Romans in the spring of 33 AD, specifically on the day before the Jews' feast of the Passover. Specifically, they, they kept really good records. There's tons of sources. You say, well, where's the proof of Jesus? It's everywhere. You want, you want scripture? You want secular sources? You want historical sources? It all, it's all there. Every last bit of it proves that Jesus lived and died, was crucified, and then come Sunday morning, they couldn't find his body. There was a bunch of historians, Josephus, Tacitus, Lucian, Barbaric, Bar Seraphion, I guess that's the name, and in the Talmud, Christ was definitely crucified that week. And they definitely couldn't find his body, saying, well, he's dead, but we can't find his body as the uh, mortuary equivalent of the dog ate my homework. Turn, uh, carrying on in verse 8 and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold Jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him then said Jesus unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. <clears throat> I'd love to see that conversation. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Here come these big, bad Roman soldiers, right? Tough guys. Hey, uh, 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 that tomb we were guarding? Um, the guy got up and left. Also, there were uh, some guys in white that looked like lightning that came from the sky. And told us that he had risen from the dead. No, we didn't fight them. We couldn't move. He told the, 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 the angels told the disciples that, that he was already gone into Galilee. What do you want us to do? You were, we, we were there to prevent him, the disciples, from stealing him. You didn't say anything about him actually rising from the dead. Verse 12. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they talked to a lawyer, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Uh, we're going to lie. This is our best plan. We're going to lie. And they would have killed him for sleeping on the job. Yeah, and, and they would have killed him for sleeping on the job. So, and here's the thing, though. I don't know how many soldiers it was, but there was, there was no fight. How many soldiers were, were sleeping on the job? Okay, let's say the disciples did come stealing away. All of these Roman soldiers didn't get one lick in? There wasn't one wounded disciple? Nobody's ear got cut off this time? Just arresting Jesus, somebody's ears got cut off. No, 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 there was no fight. Well, say, say you just slept through it. Okay, that's better somehow. They're making it up. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let's turn back to John chapter 20. There's multiple accounts of this. There's some details in here I don't want to miss. Turn to John chapter 20. So Mary comes to the tomb. He's not there. She goes back and tells the disciples. The disciples say, well, i got to see this for myself. That doesn't just happen. John chapter 20, verse 3. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, that being John, and came first to the sepulcher. And he's, and he's stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, who came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Didn't he spend months, years, telling them? Hey, I'm going to die, and three days later, I'm going to rise again. 
He got pretty plain. <coughs> then the disciples went, again, went away again into their home. So I want you to look there in, in verse 7. Says, the napkin was wrapped together in a place by itself. It is, is often said, and I'm not, uh, not an expert on this, but in, in Jewish custom, that if you got up from your place at the table and you were done, you'd set your napkin in your plate. And so the servants would come pick up the plate. Take it away. You're, you're not coming back. I'm done eating. I'm about to go. But if you folded it and set it beside your plate, the servants would pass you by because they knew you were coming back to where you were. So grave robbers don't usually stop and fold things on the way out. People that are coming back to where they were fold their napkins. So Jesus, on his way out, after resurrecting, takes time to fold his napkin and set it aside. Yep, I'm not done. I'm still here. Verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Man, if Simon and, and uh, if uh, Peter and John had just hung around a few minutes, she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. She doesn't get it. She thinks they've robbed his grave. She doesn't see. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. She's talking to an angel, and she's still complaining about Jesus being dead. She doesn't get it. Jesus says, okay. Verse 15. Jesus says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. So after this conversation, what takes place? So we've talked at length about the uh, tabernacle, right? right. It has uh, two sections. <clears throat> What's important about the Holy of Holies? You don't go in without blood. That's what this songbook here represent blood Jesus took his own blood Amen. ascended into heaven into heaven itself into the holy of holies in heaven the real one right offered his own blood Amen. on the altar poured it out what was what was the the rule in Leviticus it wasn't just okay we're gonna go we're gonna go set it They would take the blood in a, in a bowl and they would pour it on the altar. Right. Okay? That was the rule. Jesus ascended into heaven with the only sacrifice that was ever accepted by God for sin. That was the blood of Jesus Christ. And he pours it out on the mercy seat in heaven. Right. He performed the function of the high priest and offered the sacrifice to God. And in doing so, fulfilled every promise God had ever made to his created children from the foundation of the world. Turn to Hebrews chapter 1. See, this is what Jesus did for you. Amen. He doesn't require you to behave yourself so that you're worthy of that. You're not worthy of it. You can't earn that. How could you earn the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? How could you be worthy of it? The churches today will tell you you can. You gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta pray this prayer, gotta ask for forgiveness, fill in the blank, blah, 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 blah. Folks, you weren't born yet. Right. You didn't exist. You were not a part of this. We did not participate. <laughs> Jesus died, rose again, took his blood, and offered it to God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in time past 
unto the fathers by the prophets. What does that mean? It's like I've told you over and over and over again in lots of times in lots of different ways. Verse 2. Hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained more excellent name than they. Christ must get all the credit for your salvation, or what you have is a lie. Right. If, you, if your salvation includes you doing something that, that, that was a good work, or, or because you take the credit for it, your salvation is a lie. Christ did everything. Right. And he did it 2,000 years in the past before you were ever born. Folks, I have human blood, and if you've ever spilt a good bit of it, you know that it, it can be hard to get out of things. You know that it, it, it dries, it turns brown, it rots, it corrupts. Miss Pam was a nurse. She knows a lot about this. Well, Miss Pam, if you spilt blood on this carpet, what would happen in the course of a year or two, three years? The blood. It would, it would just rot. It would, it would disintegrate eventually, but it would still leave. It'll still be there. Still be there. Still, still nasty, right? You, you don't want something that's got someone else's blood on it, do you? Why it carries diseases? It's dirty. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want me to uh, stick you with a needle that had somebody else's blood on it. Why? It's, it's nasty, dirty, stinks. dangerous. What's that? Stinks. It stinks. Rotten blood stinks. Gross. Folks, for fifteen hundred years, the Jews took the blood of a lamb into the holy of holies and poured it across the mercy seat. No, there are no instructions in Leviticus to clean that blood up. None. You're not allowed back in without blood. It doesn't say clean up the old blood before you put the new on there. It says pour blood on there again every year. That blood of those lambs stunk to high heaven for 1,500 years. Every year they'd go in there and pour more on it. Ugh. That's what God demanded. Folks, when Christ poured his blood on the mercy seat in heaven, the temple veil ripped in two, and God says, okay, go clean up that mess. We're done here. The real thing is on the mercy seat in heaven. Amen. It's as fresh today as the day it was spilled for you. It doesn't dry, it doesn't rot, it doesn't corrupt. It was Jesus' blood, and it sits there on the mercy seat in heaven, just still dripping. The payment was made. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, it says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. Jesus returned to heaven with victory in hand. He marched triumphant to the throne of God and sat down. Sin has been paid for. Death has been defeated. And eternal life for every single person ever born was purchased that day. Amen. And it is offered to you for free. What does God, say, what does God require of us, Brother Glenn? Does he require a life of service? Does he require you to tithe without missing your whole life? No. Does he require you to get down on your knees and beg for forgiveness? No. God requires that we believe that Jesus paid our sin debt. That's right. That's why we call it trusting Christ. We trust that he has done what is important and we cannot. Right. Folks, Jesus won. It's over. It's done. We did not participate in this fight. People talk about fighting the good fight and 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 battling Satan. Well, that that fight's long done. Right. I don't know what Satan thought was going on. He thought, okay, Jesus is dead. Let's let's party. Hmm. What a scene that must have been when Jesus took the keys of death and hell and said, nope, they're all mine forever. Amen. Get lost. I win. Folks, Jesus died for you. Jesus rose for your, you. Died for our justification. Rose again for our sanctification. We are forgiven this morning, 2,000 and some change years later, still, blood still fresh, Right. Payment's still good. Sin's still gone. And all of humanity sits in church and pews this morning, waiting for lunch, waiting for Easter egg hunts, forgiven, but not trusting Christ. 
not trusting that Christ has done everything to take you to heaven. Folks, this morning, I want you to consider, I want you to think for a moment. If you don't know you're going to heaven, why not? Christ did everything necessary for you to go to heaven 2,000 years ago. And all God requires of you is that you believe it. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for our church and our friends and our family, Lord. We ask you to bless us as we go out this week. And we see our, our friends and neighbors. Lord, help us be a witness for Christ. Help us to preach the gospel wherever we go. Help us to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat>